Hey, family. Thank you for tuning into Our Roots Podcast with Joseph Babaifa, where only the strongest roots see the light, brought to you by Botanica Candles and more. And if you haven't had the opportunity, please tap on that subscribe button, like this video, and be sure to comment. Today's episode, Ifa and Ogun. I tell you, today's episode might be the most uncut one we've ever done. The gentleman we have on is a dear friend, someone I love, um, a polemic figure, to say the least. Um, if you like them, you love them. If you don't, it's just better to walk the other way. Please join me in welcoming Omo Ogung, a son of Ogung, Mr. Rafiq. Hello, everybody. How's everybody <laughs> doing today? Rafiq, thank you so much. People have been beasting for the Ogung episode. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know a bunch of you guys, right? Initiated priests, um, people initiated in Palo, all of these different things. And, you know, I don't feel like any of them encompass the type of Ogung as well as you do. Someone, absolutely, someone um, uncensored, someone who's so honest and someone who's so in touch with that aspect of themselves. I felt like this would be the best conversation possible. Okay. So before we delve into you and and how Ogung and you kind of meet and interact, I want to delve into Ogung, right? I love Ogung. Ogung to me um, is the perfect embodiment of masculinity. He's completely self-confident. He's not looking for anyone's confirmations. And apart from that, he's stoic. He's kind of like the John Wayne of Ifa, you know? And when we look at where Ogun was born, he was born in the Odu of Baba Ogun Dameji. And when we look at what that actually means and translate it, it means Ogun Adda Dae Jameji, which means Ogun with his machete created two. And what happened in Oguna Meiji was there was a dispute that was happening between two fishermen. One had the line, one had the hook, and they caught a really big fish. And they were arguing now that they had succeeded as to what belonged to who. When Ogun showed up and saw what was going on, he said, what, what, what's occurring here? And one said, I deserve more of the fish because I provided the hook. The other one said, I deserve more of the fish because I provided the line. You know, what do you think? And Ogun, and this is why he's really so associated with justice and divine justice, he took his machete and cut the fish in half. He said, this is for you, this is for you, moving on, right? I ask you to begin delving into the aspects that you have in common with your father. Do you find yourself sometimes in that role of mediation or people seeking you out for that wisdom? It is a role that I've gone, come accustomed to. Um, this role has been bestowed upon me, and frankly, I love it. And it, it is because of that that, yeah, people do come to me for a lot of things as far as, you know, if I were to do this, what will happen? If I should say this, what should happen? If I go to work and do this, this, and this, what should happen? And I've come to see that the truth sometimes <laughs> is if you do this this and this this is going to happen a lot of people don't want to hear that it is what it is but that role has been bestowed upon me and frankly i love it i love it i love it i love it i love to be the person that people come and say hey um i have an issue can you help me and i gotta thank my father for that I really got to thank my father for that because it's been something that, you know, I've often struggled with. Like, why are these people asking me questions? Why are these people wanting to come to me? But then, you know, I have that, I have that something that they need. So, yes. And that's really incredible because the thing was, is everybody wasn't always okay with Ogun's honesty. When he actually divided the fish the way he did, the fishermen didn't like him for it. But they respected him for it because mm-hmm. they said at the end of the day, he did it in an unbiased way, in an unbiased way. A cat's a cat, a dog's a dog, a duck's a duck. And that's kind of how Goon lived his life. And that's why he was so honored and revered by all the other Odishas. Ogun is really incredible because we're talking about an energy that was there right at the beginning. He 
he is the guy that Olod Dumari identified as the one who would clear the path from heaven to earth for the Orishas. So the classic story is, you know, he they were in the jungle and they had no way of progressing. Ogun showed up with his machete, did his little dance, cut down the leaves, and they were able to, you know, move forward with civilization. But people, you know, Isheshe priests, even Baba Popola, who we had the pleasure of speaking with one time, said it was even more profound than that. We're talking about the Orisha that literally transported them across the cosmos to be able to arrive on Earth. You know, the first astronaut, the first trendsetter, the someone that was going to be, you know, very noticeable. Do you find yourself in that role as well where, you know, you're somebody that people emulate, where you're somebody that you do something and you notice, hey, how do I do that? How do I get to where you're going as well? <laughs> it's funny that you said it because I, I had a problem with that too. You know, it was always, you know, growing up, if somebody's copying you, you take offense to it. Like, why, why aren't you doing your own thing? You know, and that goes for general life as far as like spirituality. Like, why, why are you doing what I'm doing? But then as I'm seeing it, I'm like, you know what? That's kind of an honor. That's kind of an honor that you would follow what I'm doing, that you are watching the stuff that I post, that you are wrapping your head, that you are going to these places that I go to. And I now being more conscious, being more awakened and not being more of a petty person, see that, you know, people like that. People want people see how happy I am. People see the peace that I have. People see these things and they go, you know what? I'm going to do that. And it's it's an honor. It's truly an honor. And Ogun, you know, he he initially had an issue with it, too, because he didn't know what people's intentions were. He was such a humble guy. He kind of always shunned that role. He kind of always left that for his brother, Shango, who we're going to talk about in a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, you know, he, he fulfilled his roles perfectly. You know, literally the advancement of society is accredited to this energy um, in any of his manifestations, but principally tools, principally the machete and all of these things. And, and when we talk about Ogun, we're talking about an energy who didn't know pause, all he knew how to do was move forward. You know, as you've gone through your life and you've had goals for yourself, have you always found yourself having that DNA of there's nothing that's going to stop me? Yes. You know, how has that manifested for you, even professionally or, you know, even socially? You know, um, as, as a lot of people don't know, I'm a fireman. You know, that Thank was you for your service. Oh, no problem. No yeah. problem at all. That was something that, you know, growing up was never on my radar. I never wanted to be this. You know, I never wanted to do that. It was something that me and a friend of mine and who we were, we were working at the Home Depot, decided in the break room, hey, let's do it. And something got under me and said, you know what? If you're going to do it, let's not stop. If you're going to do it, let's keep going forward. Well, you know, long story short, he's still at the Home Depot. You know, I had the will, the gumption and the fortitude to say, well, I got this idea. I got to see it through. So. I, I've I've come to find out that that energy is quite demanding. Yeah, <laughs> to say it's hard to deal with it because you get to a point where it's like, you know, you begin to question your motivations. Like, why am I dissatisfied? Why am I so ambitious? Why am I motivated? Even though I'm not a child of his, I find myself with that energy frequently because in my odu of Ireta Suga, it's where ambition was born. Mm -hmm. You know, and and ironically, Ireta Suga speaks of when Ogun and uh, my sign were best of friends. I'll take one from you. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. It's a pleasure to be spoken with you, by the way. <laughs> I've always said I have I have a couple rules in my life. I don't smoke a drink with anybody I don't love, oh, you know, because you just don't appreciate it the same way. But I, I find myself with that as well, where there's this constant drive, this constant want. And, it, and you know, it takes you to beautiful places. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when does it end, you know? And, and Ogun went through that as well because he was always working. He was always grinding. He was always trying to move forward. It made him admired, but at the same time, sometimes he would get burned out, you know? When we look at the Odu of Ogun Nameji even further, right? Because in Ogun Nameji was where Ogun was born. He has his own Odu in Ifa, you know? He, literally, the sign belongs to him. It's one of the few occasions where an Orisha owns a sign. And it's all him. And Odumila blessed him with this because of what he was able to accomplish and do for people, right? You know, there's other stories um, that speak of interactions that weren't that positive, you know? 
And one of them was with the Orisha Babaluaye, or San Lazaro, right? Babaluaye was an older Orisha. Um, he was somebody that was really stuck in his ways, and he really hated Ogun at this moment because Ogun was a young guy. He was a trendsetter. He was progressive. He represented the opposite of what Babaluaye felt a man of his age and, and rank should be having, you know, because mm. Ogun was top tier from the very beginning. So what happened? Obaluaye would never salute Ogun. He would walk by him, and Ogun admired the guy because, you know, he, he loved him, you know what I'm saying? But he wanted that recognition. So Ifa told him that if he wanted to be respected, he had to earn it and show people his value, right? So what did Ogun do? One day, Ogun, because ironically, the child of Ogun has a very tricky, mischievous nature that a lot of people don't talk about, you know what I'm saying? And knowing you... You, you, you really exercise it to perfection sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But he literally tricked Babaluaye by way of cutting certain bushes a certain way into going a different way on his way to work because Babaluaye would go to the land of Ife every morning. But Babaluaye got to a point in the road where he was faced with a lot of, like, vegetation, right? But he had a schedule, so he had to get somewhere on time. So he started trying to rip everything up with his hands, but needless to say, he started getting cut up real bad. That's why till this day, Babaluaye's skin is all messed up. Out of nowhere, Ogun pops up and says, hey, you need some help? And Babaluaye was like, yeah, my face. You know what I'm saying? I don't need you. But little by little, his flesh, you know, he was deteriorating very quickly. And he kind of looked at Ogun. He didn't ask for help, but Ogun realized, you know, it was time to show and prove. And Ogun, within a minute, with his machete, opened it, opened it up. And Bawaluaye realized his path was there the whole time, you know? Mm -hmm. So we looked at Ogun. He said, you did this? He said, yeah, I did. He said, why would you do that? He said, because I just want to be considered. I'm not asking you to bow down. I understand you're a king as well. But I just want respect and I want recognition because I've worked hard. You know what I'm saying? And you've benefited from it as well. And at that moment, Obaluaye extended his hand. He saluted him and he said, you know, you are who you are for a reason. You know, you have my respect and loyalty. Until this day, these Orishas have a great link, you know. But I ask you, being a son of Ogun, have you ever gone through those situations where you haven't been recognized or people have this natural frustration with you where they don't want to give you your flowers? Yes. You know? Yes. And the Orlando spiritual community isn't that big. Of course not. Yeah. You know, everybody knows everybody. You know, everybody knows what everybody's capable of. Everybody knows what's not what they're not capable of. You know, I was, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, <laughs> <laughs> you know, once I really started to get involved in this, you know, I started to bring this out. I started to be in public, you know, wrapping my head. I started to have, you know what I'm saying, machetes on me. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, and people thought that was weird. Um, I started to wear white. I started to do all of these things. And I'm looking at people who are, you know, jumping up on on social media who say, yeah, well, I did this and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, I was with you when you asked me questions. I was with you when you were telling me, how do I do this? How do wow. I do that? Yeah. And I'm like, at least say thank you. Yeah. You know, at least say, hey, man, my boy Feek hooked me up with this. Or, you know, there's been times that people – have come to my house and asked for, you know, hey, I need a, I, I, can, can you help me with this issue? And they, and, and I've given them books. I've written things down for them. And I look online and it's, yeah, this is all mine. And I'm just like, come on, man. You know, and that's, that's where that mischievous side comes in. And be like, you know what? I could destroy this person. Yeah, I to could, show your value. But at what point am I being petty at yeah. what point am i you know catering to not only my ego but theirs because then they'll these are the same type of people who will flip the things around and go well he's doing this to me because i'm greater so i have to kind of step back a lot of times yeah. and go you know what spirituality has a way of exposing yeah the truth will come to the so light so let those does. people do their thing i just sit back and then when whatever happens, happens, I know that they know that where they got it from. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and that seems to be a recurrent theme with the, the children of Ogun in general. And, and we, we're talking about betrayal, right? 
And once again, in this Odu of Ogun Dameji, it speaks of all the life stages that Ogun went through, right? Where, um, you know, he was betrayed by the people closest to him, you know, ultimately. And, and, and there's a story in Ogun Dameji where uh, him and his brother Shango were around each other a lot. You know, they were rocking very heavy. They were still on good terms. But um, the problem was is Shango wanted to practice follow. He wanted to get into brujeria real heavy. But Ogun was already identified to become a babalao, you know. And, and, you know, for all those out there, the child of Ogun has a natural predisposition towards Ifa priesthood. Many people in Nigeria have him as the first babalao, and apart from that, as the teacher of a lot of the students that, you know, are recognized as Orumila's initial ones, like Amosung and Amorung, who were actually blacksmiths that confection the tools of Ifa, especially Opa Osung or the Osung um, icon. So Ogun, you know, all about family, all about loyalty. Um, he just supported his brother, but there was actually a, a death order for anybody that was caught practicing this in Obatala's kingdom, and that was his father. Um, basically, you know, one day Ogun said, you know, I'm going to go visit my brother and tell him I'm going to start doing my own thing. I wish him the well, and, you know, that has nothing to do with me. Whatever happens, happens. But when he goes to visit Shango, he didn't realize that Obadala was going to go visit Shango that day as well. So Shango goes to the bathroom, and Obadala comes in and sees Ogun next to the spirit pot. And he says, what, what, what's going on here? And Ogun was like, no, 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 I was visiting Shango. And, you know, and Shango, hearing, jumped out the window in the bathroom and <laughs> went to the next land over so he didn't have to deal with it. So Obadala, feeling sorry for his son but not being able to go back on his word, chained him to the chained him to the pot you know chained him to the prenda or the ganga as it's known and he was gonna let ogun starve to death there right Urumila, one day stopping by to visit shango found ogun dying next to the prenda mm -hmm. and uh and he said you know what's the meaning of this and he called on obadala and obadala explained the situation and orula said let's perform divination to see if he's guilty or not because something here doesn't seem right you know and when they do divination, Ogundamei is revealed, thus exonerating him and Ifa identifying Shango as the issue. You know, so Badala told him, I'll let you loose. We'll rehabilitate you, but you have to do Ifa immediately because I can't deal with these mishaps no more or God forbid somebody finding out. And then Ogundameji was where Ogun and, you know, became Bawalawu and his sons began that dynasty. You know, the, the whole gist of the Pataki, because there's so many themes here, but, you know, how 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 predisposed have you been to betrayal? And then the second half is how important is loyalty to you? If you go on my Facebook, there's a story, you know, about what happened to me in college, you know, and that to me was the ultimate betrayal to where I never thought I would even be. I never thought I'd be here because that betrayal was so hard. You know, that betrayal affected you know my fraternity life to where i don't even you know if i see the guys out i just wave and keep it going Word. you know it affected my family life you know by them trying to get lawyers and you know it, everything started to just come to a point to where i i, I couldn't Oh, that's that's the ashtray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just so the ashtray <laughs> right. is off. You know. Just um, tricks of the trade. Yeah, to where um, I I I I couldn't function, and for years after that, I I held on to that. You know, that became my identity. You know, that betrayal, that betrayal. You know, even you know what I'm saying relationships. You break up with somebody, you know, they cheated on you. That betrayal. They did this to you. That betrayal. The friendship. That betrayal. You know, to where I started to hold on to a lot of things. I had a lot of resentment. You know, I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of things that I that I had to let go of, and that's why it is important that I surround myself with people who I know that if I call them at two o'clock in the afternoon, it'll be the same response that I get that if I call them at two o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. So, Absolutely. you know, those are those are the type of people I, I, I want to be around, you know, not when the sun is shining and everything's good. You know, can I call you when I'm at my worst, when I'm at my lowest? Because I would expect that if you're at your lowest, that you call me. And that was his big thing. Ogun was all about consistency. 
you know, he, he really is the example that consistency trumps talent and motivation and, you know, enthusiasm, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it is a common theme with him where he was misunderstood, betrayed, you know, disconsidered. And, you know, that just made him stronger so many times, you know? The Odu of Ogun Nameji has another theme with the children of Ogun, right? You know, um, Ogun, most people look at him and they think, man, you know, he's a little bit rough around the edges, he's a little <laughs> bit rustic. But Ogun had a very smooth, very gentlemanly, very debonair um, aspect about him, you know. Because there's a proverb in Ogun Nameji that says, "When forgive me, when the son of Ogun is excited, there's no woman that could resist him. So I ask you, Rafiq, as you've gone through your yeah. stages of masculinity and manhood, you're an imposing figure. You know how how has that that resonated with you? You know, how I, have, was I, have, I have no comment on that. <laughs> um, I have no comment. I have no comment on that. Um, yeah, I have no comment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I tell you, romance was a big thing with Ogun. Ogun had a lot of you know a lot of a lot of people interested in his time, but you know. Based on the things he had been through, it made it difficult for him to trust. Yes, you know? that is that that has been, you know, I that is that has been always the thing that has bitten me was the trust, you know, to where I had to unlearn things because, you know, people you uh you know I would be with someone and they say, oh, you have trust issues. Well, it's not trust issues as opposed to patterns. Yes, sir. I'm seeing patterns. And before it gets to what I have already seen, I just walk away. Uh, I, I just stop. I just leave. So that has been one of the things that, you know, I've had to work on, you know, with the help of, you know, therapy, with the help of, you know, I'm saying meditations, with the help of just knowing that, hey, I'm 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 the one that's kind of quick to walk away first, so I uh, yeah that that is that is very true. He didn't have any patience for it, you know, because when you when you've been hurt and you've been scarred, you know, you just you you become resistance towards the idea of going through it again, right? And that's why you have the famous story of when Ogun became disgusted with humanity, mm -hmm. when he had to go and remove himself from society to be able to find himself once more to be able to understand what to expect from people what not to um and obviously the famous story where oshun went in and lured him back to civilization but when you really look at what oshun represented there it wasn't only the form of a woman it was the concept of happiness enjoyment and understanding have you ever had i mean is it in your routine you mentioned meditation but has there ever been a period in your life where you had to completely ghost everybody yes yes and there's been several. There's been several. And sometimes I would blame it on, you know, well, maybe it's just me. But then I have to recharge. I have to really, you know, sit back and go, okay, what am I doing? You know, let's, before this gets out of hand, before this gets chaotic, step away. You know, there's been times that I've called off work. And because of my schedule, I've been in the house for five or six days. Yeah. And it's not because I'm depressed it's not because I have issues it's because I need that right now and the people who are around me understand okay he's doing his thing and I and I would tell him hey I'm going in the woods for a couple of days yeah you know when I tell people that the people that know me they know okay he's, he's off limits for a couple of days he's finding himself he's recharging leave him alone <laughs> leave him alone because if you go over there messing with them, it's gonna be a problem. Yeah. So yes, yeah. I've 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 come to, you know, and 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 it's one of those things where I love it sometimes. Yeah, the solitude. It's just to relax, get in my hammock, cigar, and just a couple of days. Give me my time. That was pretty much his routine. Every Ogun was the same way. He needed his space every now and again. And after he realized that he couldn't completely abandon humanity. They they gave him those sabbaticals where it's like, hey, Bobby, you're 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 kind of revved up right now. Take a couple of days for yourself, you know, yeah. because they needed him, but he was kind of burnt out. You know, it was like constant work, constant overstimulation. Like he was somebody that needed just the space, you know. Ogun, once again, to me, I love him because to me he's an example. He's what every man should aspire to be. There's this old saying, you know, every woman in Cuba wants to be a daughter 
of Ochung. Every man in Cuba wants to be a daughter of Shango. As you look at Shango, Shango's the guy who gets to the party. You know, he's he's all over the place. You know, but in Africa, people emulate Ogun mm-hmm. because Ogun was an amazing father. He was a, an amazing head of household. You know, there's a story in the Odu of Odimeji where it speaks where Ogun and Yemaya had a, had a son, right? But due to differences, they separated. You know, um, and Yemaya began a relationship with Orumila, you know, his brother. Um, well, they were all kind of related, so it's not yeah. as spicy as like you know us, you know, yeah. you, know you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it so it, it was, it was, it was divine. <laughs> it was divine concepts, so they got away with it. But mm-hmm. Ogun and Orula had a lot of jealousy around them, and they were constantly trying to find a way to eliminate them both at once. So what people started doing was going to Ogun and saying that Orumila was abusing his son. Ogun, being a father first, he was like, he has to die, you know? So Rumila had the concept of reading himself every morning. And when he read himself that morning, the Odu Odi Meji was revealed where he said he had to be careful opening his front door. Where he found instructed him when he opened his front door to have his stepson in front of him. When Ogun knocked on the door, he had the machete in hand ready to off Orula. But when he opened the door, he saw his son. He saw his son well-dressed. He saw his son happy, clean, healthy, you know, looking wonderful. And he saw that Orumila was near him. And he said, people have been telling me things. He said, what have they told you, brother? They said, you've been hurting my son and mistreating him because you didn't make him. He said, well, I could say whatever I want right now. You know, anybody could say anything right now. How does your son look? He said, he looks better than when he's with me. (laughs) And Yemaya said, what we have to understand is the focus is the child. We can't allow gossip and social media and all these other things yeah. to pollute the mind of people that really loved each other. Because Ogun loved him, loved Orula for taking care of his son because Ogun was always working and Yamaya, et cetera. He treated everybody well and they became a family after that. I ask you this because I know you are a father. How important has fatherhood been to you in that growth? You know, I have, I have two daughters. Um, God help us. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have I have two daughters, and my my oldest daughter she lives in North Carolina, and once everything happened, literally I I remember after you know leaving where where I was at, the first thing I said was you know I have to call my my oldest daughter because we had been at you know at odds and you know uh, just not talking to to each other that was one of the and and i had this to where i had to pull over and i called my daughter and said what whatever i've done let's put the past in the past there hasn't been since then and this has been i can't even tell you i don't think i've gone more than 37 38 hours without hearing from my child beautiful you know, my, my youngest daughter, who's in Claremont, you know, every single day. That Beautiful. that one, she she is my bodyguard to where, you know, there isn't anything that, you know, I can't, I, I'll, I'll get a phone call or something, a random text, a meme from both of my, my, my kids. And, and that to me is the ultimate, you know, that's a gangster. Especially at this stage of life, yes. where they don't have to talk. Exactly, to you. that's gangster. You can become friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. That's 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 a real man. That's you know that's something to where, you know, and, and and it always seems to come at the right time. You know, I could be having a crappy day. You know, I could not be feeling one hundred, and my daughter will send me a joke and say, "Daddy, I need bail money." Word, 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 word. We're <laughs> and ready I to just go. love Cash it. Cash app. And and I just perk up like, yep, oh, that's my child. Yes, and sir. the rest of the day goes smooth. The rest of the, what I'm, I'm I'm doing goes smooth. You know, it's become one of those things to where, you know, I love it now, and it's because of the energy that I have. Yes, sir. We're all children of the sword. We're all children of the iron, and that's what Ogun represents to us. Because no one comes in. He's really all of our fathers. Because no one comes into the world without him. You know, the surgeon. The, the, the OBGYN, the person that brings us into this earth, is Ogun. So he, 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 it was very natural for him um, to have children. And, you know, I've been blessed with four. 
but I was able to create one, and I love all my kids the same, but unfortunately I didn't get the opportunity to go through the natal stage, the neonatal stage with them. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, it, having my daughter, it's just given me so much more motivation to be in my other kid's life, because I got a 21-year-old, I got a 19-year-old, you know, my, my third one is 11 going on 30. You know, just, just <laughs> being present, you met yes. her. You know, just being yes. present for them and being that friend. And Ogun learned to do that in Odimeji. He learned how to be a part of his kid's life even though they weren't living together anymore. And it provided him a lot of solace and a lot of peace. So I, I see how that could that could provide that as well. Now, the word Ogun means witchcraft. <laughs> the word Ogun means medicine against witchcraft. <laughs> Ogun, because in Ogun Dameji, they wanted to kill him for being a brujo. Yeah. You know, and then in Ida de Meji, he was a bad boy. He he did witchcraft to be able to, you know, handle Oya. So I'm not saying that, you know, we're predisposed, but I do ask you, how much self-control does it take to not delve into the dark a lot, side of A lot. It takes a lot. Oh, yeah, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. What, what can't, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It, it takes... It takes a lot. It they know. A, they know. You. They know who you're talking to. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It takes a lot. We've we've had the conversation. Oh yeah, we have. <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> like I've already had the stuff laid out. Yeah. And I go and I do my divination. It's like, nah, you need to chill. Yeah. But I just bought all the stuff. Yeah. Nah, man, you need to chill. Yeah. You know, I it it takes it it takes me begging. Nah, man, you need to chill. Yeah. Because no matter what I do. Whatever that person did is already set in motion. Me doing what I have to do isn't going to do anything. Or it's going to delay whatever they got coming. So I've I've had to It takes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it it takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot. <laughs> now I got to ask you, you know, luckily you've been able to go through that growth process and you know how we do things over here and you've assimilated so easily and so seamlessly. But I have to ask you, you know, Rafiq, because it happened to Ogun a couple times. You know, have, has anyone ever done witchcraft to you? Yes, they, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. And she's probably watching right now. You're probably watching right now. You're, you're, you're probably watching. How did you handle that? How did you do it? How did you, I mean, without names, of course. But what I'm saying is, how did you come to that knowledge? I came to you. Uh, <laughs> I came to you um, and was like, hey, something's off. Yeah something's off and you know when you start feeling that something's off and it's not just oh i'm just waking up and i'm tired or i'm just no no something is off to where i have to go hmm i can't put my finger on this and it, and it wasn't even that person they contracted other people thinking that i would not find out things you know and that's why it's important to do divination it's important to you know do what you have to do to go, okay, this is where this is coming from. Okay. All right. And then go, okay, what are the necessary steps now? Because I, 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 I used to have a saying, I still say it. Let me stop lying. I can throw roots or I can throw hands. Yeah. Either one. Yeah. And I have to have that restraint of, okay, Let's handle this correctly. That's growth because you told me some <laughs> stories about you in downtown Orlando. That's what, yes. I can't hang with you, man. Yes. yes. <laughs> Shout out to Corona Cigar. Sorry oh, about that. We need a sponsorship. With with the whole chair Ooh, thing. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry about the chair being thrown oh, man. on Orange Avenue oh. along with the person that got thrown onto Orange Avenue. Oh, Lord. Sorry about that. We pray. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. My bad, dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that, that was Ogun's thing. Through his growth, he was able to overcome. And you really see a lot of Ogun's rage with his brother, Shango. You know, um, because Shango represented the opposite of what Ogun was. You know, Shango was flashy. Ogun was reserved. Shango was a talker. Ogun really didn't talk much. He was more action-based. Mm. And they actually went to war multiple times. You know, one of those stories is over the Orisha Oya. And um, it was really interesting because you say throw hands or throw roots. Ogun was a man's man. He was like, if we're going to settle it, we're going to settle it in combat to the death. He was old school. He was there in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Shango wasn't really about that. You know what I'm saying? So when Ogun declared war on his brother Shango, Shango went running to Orumila. 
And Orumila was like, you know you can't see him face to face. You know, you need something. And Orumila performed it both so Shango could create the akoshe or the medicine to defeat Ogum. So when they enter into the ring, Ogum's whooping him, handling him proper. You know, it, it got to a point where he was just kind of bouncing him around before he was going to end him, right? And right when that failed swoop was going to come from the machete, Shango did the lightning bolt. Bah! And Ogung, having the natural, like, Wolverine complex of being made of metal, he got stunned. Shango took advantage of the situation, cheap shot at him, cheap shot at him and ultimately, you know, won. But Ogun always told him, he said, you know, if it wasn't for the lightning, you were done for, right? Um, so I, I ask you, because it's an interesting concept, because, you know, the metal does not react to the flame. You know, it just gets hotter and hotter. If anything, it empowers it, right? The mm -hmm. blacksmith concept and whatnot. But the electricity was what did him in. So what was it like being a firefighter, a saver of lives, and then finding out your Odisha is the one that does that in nature? How did that make you feel? How did that empower special. you? Special. It made me feel special. It made me feel to where it was almost a boost to the ego. Like, wow, this is who I am. F finally. You know, it was almost like the veil had been pulled back, the curtains open now. This is who I am. This is what I do. And I do it good. Yeah. That was the most, I, I could say, uh, other than the birth of my children, that was the most impactful moment of, of my life, to have that knowledge of, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, w before you were with us, you went through a couple different experiences, like some of us do, you know, we sometimes get mishandled. Yes. Spiritually. And <laughs> Ogun went through the same thing in the Odu Okana Meji. Because they realized that Ogun had money, he had movement, he had prosperity. And they were always looking for ways to try to take advantage of him. And in Okana Meji, um, he actually paid double the going rate to become a Bawalao, right? He later found out and flipped out, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. what was done was done. So I ask you, and I don't need details per se, but have you gone through those experiences yes. where, you know, <laughs> there has been that mishandling? And how did that end up, you know, for that? How did that affect that relationship with said person? <sighs> That 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 story was one of the most touchy stories ever because I remember waiting outside of that person's house. Oh Lord. To where I was getting ready. I had already said I'm I'm going to jail tonight. Wow. I had already It is what it is. It, it it just is what it is. You know, you have the audacity to do this to me. Yeah. And a phone call from a friend in North Carolina saved me. It was like, listen, stop. Stop what you're doing because I can feel that you're doing something stupid. And I didn't know that this person had actually told other people that I was outside. They saw me. And I'm outside this person's house, ready. Ready and willing to be like, listen, whatever you got, ain't no Orisha going to save you. Yeah, I'm here now. Now you have to see me. Now once... I figured out that you took this money from me, that you that you lied to me, that you did all of this betrayal to me. I'm outside your house. Throw hands, throw roots. How you want to do this? And I was already at the throw hands. That this was way this was young in in in, in my spiritual practice. I was ready to go. Yeah. I was on go. You know, that person called and said, "Hey, you need to not do this." You know, to where now the <laughs> Where my fire station is, I drive by this person's house. That's growth. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times we've been going on a call or coming back from a call, and and I don't even tell the guys, you know, but that house right there, if that house catches on fire, <laughs> we might we 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 might we might we mm -hmm. might hit a speed bump. <laughs> something something might happen. Something might not happen. <laughs> Just saying. What's so. that dynamic like in the uh, – because my grandfather was a firefighter in Brooklyn. You know, he was a man's man. You know what I'm saying? He was looking good. You know, all these different things. What's that dynamic like being uh, a son of Ifa and a son of Ogun in the fire brigade, in the firehouse? What's that dynamic like with all that testosterone? You know, Ogun loved, you know, being with his soldiers. He loved being with the troops. He nice. loved – you know, some of the best sleep that I've had has been at the firehouse. With the brothers, yeah. Because I know that – 
if something goes off, there's 10 other guys that have my back right now. You know, so it's it's a dynamic to where it's a big clubhouse that everyone knows their job, everybody's capable of their job, and I'm not worried about anybody outside of circumstance. House catches on fire, I know we'll, we'll be all right. You know, barring any future mishaps or anything like that, I know that the crew that I have is solid. I nice. know that the people that I, that I work with and work for are solid. Nice. So it's it's that warrior mentality, you know. When the tones go off and there's something and we're all going, it's that war. It's that thrill of the hunt, thrill of the kill type thing. To where I enjoy it, and it's you know, it's funny because uh, my my blood pressure, and my heart rate goes down when I'm inside chaos. You're a professional. You know, to the where training. I, yeah, to where I feel comfortable inside of a burning house. Wow. I feel comfortable when, you know, there's a call and you got overturned cars and, you know, barring gruesome details and everything's going on. I'm like Another day at work. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so oh, that's that's real preparation. That's real that's real tranquility. That's real serenity and peacefulness within all of that 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 chaos, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, at first glance, you're somebody that takes care of yourself, right? So, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. The safest place is in your arms, brother. I swear to God. <laughs> you know, you dap up Rafiq, you're like, there's nothing happening to me, yo. <laughs> but, you know, in the Odu of Osam Eji, it speaks of when human beings were weak, right? And um, they didn't have any force or strength to be able to work, create any of these things, right? So they went for divination, Um with Oromila and the Odu of Osameji was revealed where Ifa said they needed to perform sacrifice to Ogun with animals, right? Various types of animals and meat. And when they did this, Oromila actually, I mean, Ogun actually inserted iron into the white blood cell, right? Thus creating the red one, which is the one that has really propelled humanity into being able to, you know, take on labor, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how important um, has fitness been and, um, you know, how much of a safe haven is the gym for you? You, yeah. know? you know, before I became a fireman, like I said, this this was something that was never on, on my radar. You know, this was, you know, I'm working at the Home Depot, um, and this was two guys in a break room saying, hey, we should be firefighters. Well, at the time, I was over 400 pounds. Whoa. You know, to where I was like, well, I got to do something because – I got to get ready. Yeah, I got to get ready. So I literally took a year and a half. And religiously, I was at the gym to where my day didn't go right until I went to the gym. Sure. My day didn't go right until I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and at least walked around the neighborhood at least. And then the walk started turning into jogs. The jogs started turning into sprints slash walks. And, you know, to where I could feel the progress to where I was like, Okay, this is this is what I want. This is what I and it was almost that high that I needed. It was that thing that kept me moving, kept me move, kept me motivated to where I was like, okay, I have a goal, and the way I am right now and the way that I need to be are two different places. So I kept at it, and it became daily. Nice. So it became daily, and then it became to where, like I said, I, I just didn't feel right if I had to take a rest day. It became a I lifestyle, to, yeah, became an identity. I had, I, had to, I had to not go to the gym that day, you know, to where, you know, everything started to fall apart to where, to where I had to go to the gym to get myself, find myself. I had to put my headphones on. I had to put that big hoodie on. I had to sweat everything out. Even if it was just me for 30 minutes sitting in a sauna, I had to be there. Yeah. So that's the importance of it to me. Surrounded by the iron. Yes. You know? And you really delved into the hunter aspect of Ogun there because a lot of people focus on the blacksmith, you know, lifting the iron, you know, going through the process or the war. But Ogun was a hunter deity along with Oshosi, his, 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 his best friend. And um, you look at the characteristic of the hunter, it's all about the goal. You know, we're in constant preparation. We're refining our skills. You know, to go, that in itself is a war. Like, we're going into the jungle to dominate an animal, to be able to provide for ourselves and our family. You know, that concept of hard work religiously. And Ogun really found his work ethic in the Odu of Ikameji. 
right? And Ikameji was where Ogun was marginalized. You know, he didn't really have a lot of means, but he had a lot of ambition. He had strength. He had talent, and he wanted to prove himself, right? So one day, he arrives at uh, a farm, you know, a wealthy landowner, who he didn't realize was Orula, right? And um, he basically presented himself and said, hey, I'll do whatever you want. I just need to learn something, and I need to do something, because if I'm not here being productive, I'm doing some nonsense out in the world. And Orumila said, well, hey, there's seven tools there. Find a way to bring this thing back to life, because the crops were dying. Um, you know, things weren't going well, because Orumila didn't have anybody to really, you know, help sustain all of this land. It was a lot of acreage. And Ogun performed wonderfully. You know, that's why when you look at Ogun's tools, it's seven different ones. But some of them are farmer tools, the pick, the axe, the, the shovel, all of these mm -hmm. different things. He had a he was a farmer as well. He was a cultivator. And when Orumila came back and, and saw, you know, the parcel, how it was thriving, the yams, the this, the that, Ogun had made Orumila more money than he could ever think of. And Orumila realized that this was a man that was trustworthy. Um, and he said, you know what? You have a choice. You know, because I don't, I don't make anybody a slave. You could stay in business with me, or I can give you the tools, and you could, you know, do your own thing. Um, and Ogum said, "No, I'll stay. You know, we'll renegotiate the contract. We'll make it a little more fifty-fifty. But I can never, you know, forget the opportunity that you gave me. So, you know, work ethic. You know, you you've spoken about it in the gym. You've spoken about it within your profession. You know, how important." Has, has that been as far as progress, you know? Yeah. Because without it, who are you? With Without nice. that work ethic, who are you? You know, are you just somebody who's just there? And that's that, that was always, you know, even before I got into this, I never wanted to be a person that was just there. I always wanted to be the person that when, you know, my father sees me, says, that's my son. You know, before my mother passed away, I was fortunate enough that my mom got to see me graduate from fire school. Oh, God bless me. May she rest, man. And Jesus. she pinned my badge on me. That was, you know. Oh, my God. You know, that was that moment of, you know, and I, and I remember her looking at me and going, you did it. You know, that that was important to me. Not to be, yeah, some, I mean, and, and no disrespect to anybody who's working a nine-to-five, but that was that was something to where I had to be like, this is who I am. This is my identity. I'm this person. And I wanted my family to say, that guy who's my brother, who's my cousin, who's my uncle, who's my father, is this. And that was that was the importance of it. What was your relationship like with mom? <sighs> if my mom was here, she'd be here. <laughs> Yo, I remember when we actually sat down at the Corona together. I remember it was on Mom's birthday. Yes, that was how divine that oh, was. Man, you know, that was that was amazing. You know what 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 were some of the things she taught you? What were some of those What were some of those moments? You know, I, you know, it was so much. Yeah. It was so much to where it was always like even now I still think about the things that she told me. You know, situations that I could be in, I could hear my mom's voice saying, "Do this, don't do this." You know, when I go before my altar, I still hear my mom's voice. I still feel her to where it, it's it's a lot to where it, it's she's taught me so much to where I can't even like we would literally be talking for days on the things that she's given me, the tools, the information, the knowledge, you know, and she was a nurse. Wow. You know, and and so it, it, it just it was a lot <laughs> growing up. You know, to where, you know, people used to think, you know, oh, man, your mom's so this, your mom is so strict. No, she wasn't strict. She was very protective because she knew what was out there. Yeah. You know, she she knew how evil the world was. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, well, I can't go to this party because my mom won't let me. And then I would hear about somebody getting beat up, somebody getting shot, somebody getting stabbed at this party. So my mom, you know, had that gift of foresight to say, no, you're going to stay in the house. The older we get, the smarter our parents get, yo. Yes. You know, and, and the reason, what was her name, by the way? So Barbara. Was, may she rest. And and the reason I, I really bring her up and delve into that is because there's a bad stereotype with Ogun and his children. You know, 
in Nigeria, they don't talk about the unspoken pataki, right? Or Ogun's mistake, mm-hmm. right? We won't either because I'm, I'm, I'm all about painting a different picture of the Orishas. Yeah. You know, we all have our mistakes, but you are not defined by the worst decision in your life, you know? And um, it, it's really incredible because you're breaking that stereotype just with your story. You know, to have that productive, healthy, warm relationship with mom, especially her being able to see you fulfilled, um, that's all Ogun ever wanted. He wanted a family. He mm-hmm. wanted to be accepted. He didn't want to be shunned. Um, and, and I'm happy you were able to have that moment with her, you know. The Odu Obeyono, or Obe Ogunda, it speaks of a story where there was a gentleman who arrived in a land that was different because he wanted to switch it up. He didn't feel like things were going well in his birthplace, and he wanted to go somewhere where, you know, he could change his stars. When he arrived, things went well. They recognized he was talented, capable, um, and, you know, he started making real changes there. But, you know, with progress, when you're surrounded by the wrong people, comes envy. You know, and, and now admiration turned into jealousy and they were trying to find a way to eliminate him politically, you know. And what they did was is they kind of had like a Hunger Game type thing where they would vote somebody to be fed into um, the jungle to a monster that lived there, right? So before, because he kind of was feeling the vibe, you know, I might get selected, you know, because he wasn't a fan of the process altogether. He, uh, he performed divination where Obe Ogunda was revealed. And Ifa said he needed to carry a rooster on him when he got thrown into the jungle. Well, needless to say, he got thrown into the jungle. And when he got in there, the monster found him and attacked him. So before he could grab him, he threw the rooster at the guy. And the guy started devouring the rooster and he was able to calm down. And the monster looked at the guy and said, "Uh, who are you? He says, my name is Obeyono. And he says, what the hell are you doing here? He said, well, I got voted into the jungle this year. He was like, okay. Why did you feed me? He said, because Ifa told me to, and it seems like you were going to eat me, so I'd, I'd like to have a chance, you know what I'm saying, just yeah. to say my last words. The monster ended up being Ogun, and Ogun said, you are the first person to treat me like a human being. I don't want to eat people, but they keep me starved up here, you know, and to be honest with you, I've been getting kind of tired of it. The rooster tasted much better. He said, how about this? You're going to walk down there with me, and we're going to see how you're going to get treated. And when they went back into the, the village, people were terrified because they saw Gung and they were like, good Lord, you know, that, that's what we've been feeding people to. And he looked at all of them and he said, okay, this is how it's going to work. Kind of like how you, you know, how you express yourself. He was like, either you're going to make this guy king or I'm going to slaughter all of you. It was a very easy decision. Yeah. And they made Obeyono king and Ogun was his personal bodyguard, Right. You know, being around you, knowing you as a person, a friend, a brother, um, you have that energy. And I ask you, how important has it been to you as a a concept of defending the weak, defending those that you see don't have those same capabilities? You know, how how is that role? How how have you played that? It's got me in a lot of trouble. I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, because I would be the person least likely that people would think would be the one who will start defending people who are deemed weaker in society. It's your whole life, your whole your whole you job, know, your whole MO. Even when, you know, we go even when my group of friends go out, I tend to have that body uh, for some reason I fall into that bodyguard role to where, you know, if we're walking through something, I'm leading. Yeah. You know, I have to protect people. And that's become almost my identity that's be- and, and and it's not like I think about it you know I I don't basically wake up and say today I'm going to protect everybody no if I feel like somebody's being taken advantage of yeah I'm going to say something yeah you know if I feel like you're harming a child I'm going to say something I feel like if you're doing something to the elderly I'm going to say something if you're doing something with people who, you know, have any type of like mental illness or, you know, mental mental capacity issue, I'm going to say something. And you, nine times out of 10, actually 10 times out of 10, you ain't gonna like it. Yeah. Because these are the people who, you know, not, not only my job, but I feel like I can't be the person if they aren't protected. I can't be me. Yeah. I lay awake at night knowing 
that person got mistreated and I said nothing. Yeah. That person got run over. That person got taken advantage of and I said nothing about it. I can't have that on my conscience. That's beautiful. And that's was that was Ogun's whole thing. You know what I'm saying? He he had so many beautiful aspects of his personality and I lean back on my sign because Ogun and and Ireta Suka were best friends in heaven. I get along with you guys. I haven't <laughs> I haven't met a son of Ogun that I don't, you know, I don't rock with because mm-hmm. it's just to not get along with them. You kind of have to analyze yourself. Yeah. It's like, what did you do? Because the iron is truthful. That's why in Nigeria, if they find you to be a practitioner of Ifan Orisha, they make you swear on the blade. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because there was no lying in him. There was no, you know, malintentions. There was, it was just, it was what it was. And, and he lived his life and his truth that way. And whether you liked it or not, you know, and that, that's a beautiful thing. Not only as a man, as a woman, as, as a being, you know, to live the truth, you know. And, and I, I want to bring it full circle, Rafiq, and ask you, you know, how has Ogun changed your life? For the better. I see. For the better. That's all I could. He's changed it for the better. You know, I was a little scared at first. Yeah, sure. It's epic. <laughs> you know, but he's changed it for the better. You know, I was a little, you know, naive with the energy, but he's changed it for the better. I was a little, a, a little petrified. I, I can't even say scared. I was petrified of it. But it's changed it for the better because looking back on all the things before I even got into this, I was like, wow, I really was doing that before. I really was acting like that. I, this was the person I really was. You know, and then reading about Ogun going, wow, okay. I get it now. Yeah. What a beautiful conversation, brother. Oh, man. And I tell you, that's why it's been an honor. We had to have we had to have you on here. You're a beautiful man. You're a beautiful person. And I just want to give you the space and opportunity to leave, um, you know, our public, your public, the religious community here in Central Florida and, you know, all over the world at this point by way of the channel. What what are some final words you'd like to say to them? Before you could do anything, love yourself. Nice. Love yourself first. Everything else will fall into place. That's beautiful. Thank you. Ah, no problem. Oh, man. Guys, what a beautiful and epic conversation. I want to say thank you to Mr. Rafiq once again, our production, our production team, to this cigar and this wonderful brandy. A <laughs> um, couple final points I'd like to go over before we disconnect. Um, Botanica Candles and More is up and running. Consultations, mentorship programs, delivery of products, whatever you need, you can get it from us through there. The podcast is available on all platforms. Be on the lookout for membership opportunities to get exclusive content and access to us here. And from all of us here at Our Roots Podcast, thank you. And until next time, see the light.